Hello and welcome to One North Main, BCA's magazine show where we highlight the people, places and events that make this city, our city, great. Today we have a special episode, the Speaker Series, sponsored by the First Evangelical Lutheran Church. So sit back and relax and see what your community, the City of Champions, has to offer. The Lutheran Speaker Series was fabulous. First, we're going to give you a little background on the First Evangelical Lutheran Church of Brockton. It was organized in April of 1867 as the first Swedish Evangelical Lutheran Church of North Bridgewater. Founded by Swedish immigrants, the church was the first religious institution in New England established by Scandinavians. Their current vision is to become a visible, outreaching community resource, and man are they. They had five special guests community leaders through the city of Brockton. Mayor Bill Carpenter, Superintendent of Brockton Public Schools Kathy Smith, Council President Robert Sullivan, Councilor Shana Barnes, and finally Police Chief Robert Hayden. Let's sit back and enjoy some clips from the speaker series. Uh, Brockton detectives working with the state police executed a uh, breakup of a major narcotics ring in the city. Uh, they executed warrants on Lawrence Street right here in the neighborhood. State police also executed warrants in the town of Weymouth. And uh, they took two major drug dealers off the streets of our city, over 600 grams of cocaine along with heroin, Percocet, $38,000 in cash, multiple weapons and ammunition. Um, it's a real uh, major drug bust, the second major one in less than two weeks here led by Chief Hayden. And I don't know how much you've heard about our new police chief, and Jim tells me you'll have a chance to meet him coming up uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, but he's had a dramatic impact here in the city in the, just the month and a half or so that he's been here. And one of the many changes he has made um, is he doubled the size of the narcotic detectives unit. Um, and in addition to that, he is working very closely with all the other state and county and federal law enforcement agencies. And some of these agencies have been helping us here in Brockton in the past. But what he's done differently besides expanding the scope of the number of agencies that are now bringing resources to the city, um, he's also for the first time has everyone working cooperatively and in sharing intelligence. So in the past, you know, the DEA might come in on an investigation and make a few arrests, uh, or the state police. But what's occurring now is more than two dozen state, federal, and local law enforcement agencies are sending representatives to meet in the Brockton Police Station once a week to share intelligence about various individuals and operations going on in the city. We broke up a major heroin ring a week ago that was a direct result of one of these uh, intelligence meetings where Brockton police put the name of a few individuals out that they were you know, looking at and one of the outside law enforcement agencies, that person had come up in one of their investigations. They shared the intelligence and within days were able to uh, obtain search warrants and make a major bust. So, this really is a, a new strategy that's paying dividends already in terms of all of the agencies, not just committing resources to the city, but sharing intelligence. Um, and I'm so proud today of the Brockton Police Force and all the other agencies and the, the state police who again made a major dent in the drug supply in the city today. It's the perception of Brockton that is the thing we have to change. The fact that you know, the perception from people outside the city that it's not safe to live here, it's not safe to be here. And I think that some of this commitment that we're making under our new chief is a key to changing that perception. On days like today, people will begin to change their perception of the city. 
Now, it's going to take a lot more than just that, but it really begins with the perception of safety and crime here in the city. And it's why I love our new chief so much, because he's an old school guy. We've got to address the vacant and abandoned properties that are plaguing the city, the property crime in the city that's directly tied to drugs. You can't separate, when you start to look at the crime, we have a gang problem, we have a drug problem, and you can't separate them, they're intertwined. The, the gangs are in the drug distribution business. Most of the shootings in the city involve drugs one way or another. Someone ripping someone off, someone unhappy, someone selling drugs in the wrong neighborhood, but the, the problems are intertwined. And then when you think about property crime, the, the break-ins, uh, the robberies, things like that, the police will tell you that somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of the property crime in our city today is perpetrated by people who are stealing um, due to a drug addiction. They're stealing to um, fuel their drug addiction and to obtain drugs. We are, in our economic development plan, we're reestablishing a planning office for the city. We posted the job of city planner yesterday. We'll act, we're actively recruiting to bring a top-notch city planner back into the city um, to create a master plan, to rezone. It's an important piece that's missing right now. We continue to have new people coming every day. We're a school system of 17,000 students. And when you look at the area towns, one of the things you're going to hear about is declining enrollments. And I know you have, are you a selectman? I'm sorry? Do you, selectman from West Bridgewater? And I know that the towns that surround us are, are again having declining enrollment in their schools and yet in Brockton, in two years, we have over 1,000 new students. When I came into uh, office as superintendent, I um, actually was elected just over a year ago. It feels like it has been years. Um, it's, it's been a, a wonderful experience when you come in having been in a district for 37, 38 years. I can't imagine doing this anyplace else. When problems arise, I know where to go for the help. I work with my colleagues. I know the teachers. I'm able to go out and speak to them to make sure that everybody is moving in the same direction to continue to support you know, our very, very needy population of students. We are one of the few communities that does offer full day kindergarten. And it has certainly made a difference for our children to have an opportunity to come in at very early ages, actually sometimes four, five-year-olds where they are getting a full year of education, a full day in our schools. We also are looking very closely at funding that we're told is coming from the state, looking at what we call pre-K programs. I just walked through uh, your church and we saw the little pre-K uh, class going on down the hall. For us, when I tell you about the challenges of having English language learners, to get those children into school at a much earlier age, to, to start to make sure that they have all the literacy that you can imagine, to actually hear their peers talking and speaking English, makes a difference for those children as they move along in our school system. So with the 1,000 new students last year, we actually in April said, what are we going to do with about 300 new kindergartners coming in that we don't have space for? Many of you that have lived in the city know that a number of years ago we took the old B.B. Russell School offline up in the north side of the city. So within six or seven months, we brought our own facility department together. We rehabbed the building. It is a beautiful, beautiful kindergarten center if you have an opportunity to see it to this day. We've actually renamed it. We've renamed it the Barrett Russell School instead of the B.B. Russell School. And one of the things I found out in renaming it, I'm not sure, and I know we have historians here, so Barrett Russell was your first superintendent of schools in the Brockton Public Schools. So, but in 20 years, what are we going to look like? I had an opportunity this fall to visit a school district called Long Beach in Long Beach, California. As much as that sounds like a great place to be, it's a community that very much looks like our community. And what they're trying to do is to build high schools that are filled with technology and math, smaller learning communities, probably from 800 to 1,000 youngsters in a high school. So this is something that I do not want to wait. I don't want to leave it for the next superintendent. The time is right for us as a community, certainly to see what we can afford, to make sure with a facility master plan, 
we are out there seeing with what they call school building assistance funds, money that we're able to, we, excuse me, when you built your new schools, and you have about five new schools that you've built in the past 15 years, some of that funding was 80%. Others, I believe it was 90%, the first couple of schools that we built. So by having a facility master plan, we will make sure that if that funding becomes available for our community, we're certainly able to move forward. So again, we're a community. Instead of sending our children out to collaboratives, sending our children out to, to other school systems to be educated, we make sure that we're resourced in the Brockton Public Schools to deal with the large number of students that require additional help because they have a language disability. They have a vision impairment, a hearing impairment. You probably hear a lot about Asperger's, our children that are on the spectrum, uh, and, uh, children that have autism. So this is our, our largest growing population with our special needs students. And what we do is we study them, we make sure that we resource those classrooms well with teachers that are highly trained, with paraprofessionals that can support our teacher, so every one of these children have an opportunity for a, certainly a first-rate education in the Brockton Public Schools. Well, uh, first of all, thank uh, Jim Benson for, uh, for offering uh, an invitation to have me join you on this uh, Lenten luncheon uh, Friday afternoon. I really want to thank you. Um, the Swedish meatballs look great, but as an Irish Catholic, I think I might go to hell if I eat them, so I, uh, <laughs> I decided to pass on them. Uh, in 2005, I decided I wanted to run for office. Uh, I had never run for anything in my life other than at Brockton High School. I was the class vice president. And my, uh, my wife said to me, what are you, crazy? And I said, you know what, Maria, if, if we're going to be here, and at that time we, we didn't have any children, I said, uh, if we're going to raise our kids here, we need to have a community like, like we both had growing up. You know, it's never going to be the same as the 1950s when my mom and dad were working at the Center Theater on, on Main Street. Um, but you know what, we, we need to have people that can try to make a difference. Uh, in 2005, my dad and I walked around the entire city of Brockton. Uh, there's seven wards, 28 precincts, and there's many, many streets, and there's more dogs than you'd know. But we, uh, we went out there, and we did it the old-fashioned way. We just knocked on doors, and I said, you know, who I am and why I want to run. And, you know, some people, uh, you know, had a lot of questions, which I thought were appropriate. Uh, and, you know, we, we were successful, and I, I was elected um, councillor at large, and I've been re-elected um, three additional times. So, actually, this is my ninth year on the city council. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's really an honor and a privilege um, to serve because, you know, you, you definitely don't do it for the time commitment because I spend many, many hours away from my young family and, and my wife, but you do it because you're trying to make a difference to the people that live in our community. You know, they say this is the city of champions, and I really, I really take that to heart because Brockton is our home. It's your home. It's my home. And if you don't live in Brockton, you, you worship here, you work here, you have a connection to the city of Brockton. Um, some, some, some things that I've done since I've been on the City Council that I'm proud of um, is the streetlight acquisition. And people say, what the heck is the streetlight acquisition? Well, for two years, I was really banging the drum saying, to, at that time it was then Mayor Linda Balzotti, saying, listen, the City of Brockton is spending a ton of money every single month for rent of the streetlights. We're paying National Grid hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars every year rent. We don't own the streetlights, but we're paying rent. Other municipalities in the Commonwealth, uh, the town of Randolph is one, uh, the town of Easton is another, the city of Quincy, uh, purchased them. So I said, you know, let's, let's investigate that. And after two years, um, it came to fruition, and we purchased them. And we purchased every streetlight in the city of Brockton for $42,000 from National Grid. That $42,000 investment seems like a lot of money, forty-two grand it is. But when you're talking a budget of $365 million, it's, it's not. That investment saved us $650,000 last year. So we don't have to pay that rent anymore. So we need to be able to take care of those that have given our community so much. So what I did last year, and, and this might be because I, I have a legal background, is I said, listen, we need to come up with something on an ordinance, uh, a law in the city of Brockton that's gonna help out the seniors. And let's not just help out the seniors, let's help, them, help out the veterans that are coming home or have served our city and our country so admirably. So right now, uh, we uh, passed last year at the end of the legislative session. It's the Senior Citizen Veterans Work-Off Program. Other cities and towns in the Commonwealth do this. And what it is, is there's a program in place now in the city of Brockton, and Mayor Carpenter's office will be the one that's going to monitor it. And seniors and veterans can apply. It's a lottery. 
And if your name is chosen, then you volunteer a certain amount of hours in the city of Brockton, be it at City Hall, the libraries, the schools, uh, the War Memorial, dif different locations. And as a result of volunteering your time, you're going to get a price reduction, a dollar amount off of your real estate taxes. Um, so I think at the end of the day, when you, when you serve and, you know, when you're, you're out there trying to make a difference, and I, my wife agrees with me on this one, she's not a political person. Two most important things, in my humble opinion, is your family and your reputation. And I really pride myself on my reputation. Now, I'm not always going to make everybody happy. I understand that. And you have to have thick skin at times when you're in political arenas. But if you stand up for the principles that you grew up on, and I said my mom and dad were both Brocktonians, a registered nurse and a teacher, and they taught me what's right and what's wrong. Now, growing up in Brockton back then, if my mom and dad weren't home and I did something, and it was two sisters and a brother, maybe we did something uh, you know, that my neighbor might not like. You know, sure as heck, that neighbor's gonna call my mom and dad when they get home. And that's how it was growing up. You know, you had your neighborhood watching out and everybody watched out. And unfortunately, those days are gone. They're gone for many reasons. You know, there's not always a, a mother and a father in a household anymore. Uh, and people are working two or three jobs just to try to get by. So, you know, I think we owe it uh, to our community and to the younger generation to, to watch out for them. And I'm trying to do that right now at City Hall. Thank you very much, too, to the, the parish for inviting me to come and, and address you during these Lent luncheons. Um, it's always really good to kind of sit and take a moment and collect yourself and, and to redirect yourself in, in where you're going. And I feel that um, this is a really good opportunity to do that, and especially during this, um, this holy time. As Jim said, I am... Uh, I work for Congressman Lynch, a dis district representative right here in his Brockton office. Um, I may have even spoken to several of you if you've ever called. If anyone ever says, you know, call your congressman, you get me. So, uh, as I was elected recently to the city council, and, and that was a, a remarkable, remarkable thing uh, for myself, for my team, my family, um, and I feel for the city. I really feel that I have a different kind of perspective um, to bring to the city council, and I feel actually that I have done that um, even in my short time there. Um, I'm not shy. I speak up. I ask questions, um, and I try to make the best decision that I feel um, is for the city and, and for the residents. I, before any of this, um, you know, I, I grew up here, and I'm a resident here. I've, I've always been a resident here, uh, so I, I really feel that my perspective and my position is not that different in, in the law and politics that always interested me because it directly affects what we do and what we don't do, what we can do, and what we're eligible to do. And um, that really was, was something that I, I took a, a great interest in. And I'm glad that I'm able to go forward in that in my chosen career. I, I have had several careers, um, mostly in law and justice, uh, as Jim said. My first job actually out of college was uh, with the district attorney's office right here. Um, when Mike Sullivan was the district attorney, and I stayed, I think, a few years after Tim Cruz became uh, the new DA, and then moving on to the Department of Youth Services, working with uh, the victims of juvenile offenders. That was really interesting, because that was a whole another avenue from going from the prosecution of the juveniles and of criminals and perpetrators and all that to see the other side and to see kind of how their actions affected uh, the people that they um, injured or, or, or harmed. And mo then moving on to child welfare. Um, and at, over here, right over here in Brockton, all my jobs really have been in Brockton, my professional career. Um, and seeing yet another side of community and another side of the population, how even some of the, the, the juvenile, the juveniles that came into court, going a little bit further, or going actually back to see how their home life was and how that also played in and affected how they grew up and, and thinking back how they may have ended up at the juvenile court um, and in DYS. So all of those things really, really played a part. And then you know, moving on from there now to policy and law and seeing how the things that happen in Washington, the things that happen at the State House, things that happen in the council chamber, how that affects everyone. The urban college campus that's coming. Um, there, there are three colleges that are the closest to us, Massasoit, that is here in the city, um, Bridgewater State University, and actually, well, it's not the closest, but um, UMass Boston. 
they are in talks right now and have actually been for several years, almost a decade or over a decade now, to have a satellite campus here in Brockton. And um, they're actually just looking for a place really to put it. And because in you know, doing their development research, a lot of their students over the past few years, they all come from Brockton or the surrounding areas. And you know, one of the good things that they did that when they did the commuter rail, the commuter rail goes straight through all of these places. It goes, it stopped, there's a stop right at UMass, the stop here, and then the stop down in Bridgewater. Um, so it does service the students that attend there, but they're seeing a, an increase in the, the student enrollment from this area. So it just makes sense to put something right here in, in our backyard. And we have all of this real estate, all this unused real estate on Main Street, in downtown, and, and in the, the very close uh, vicinity to that area. Might as well use it, and might as well use it for something that's good, making education a lot more accessible to a lot more of the kids. If the kids around here, if they can see you know, there's a college right there in my town. It might change some thinking. It might start, you know, shifting some minds in, in fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. They may even have some, you know, some youth, um, some kid programs that they can, you know, come and visit the colleges or take some college credit. In Massasoit, they have that at Brockton High. The students can leave campus and go to, to Massasoit to take some college credits before they go into college. Um, so if, if we can get that done, that would be really, really great, and it, it's on its way. With the development of the Trinity Project and all of the housing development that's going on over there, the, the lofts and um, the, the night building there, the station lofts, all of that is gonna really play a, a huge role in that because it, that's one of the biggest things too, you know, to have some housing for these students. So if we can get them in a classroom or even you know, starting small and just having um, professors coming down doing office hours here, just kind of having them come down in this area um, and exposing our, our students and, and even folks that want to continue their education to go to a, a collaborative school. Um, I think that that's great. That's, that's one of the biggest things that I'm, I'm really, really interested in. I took the job in Brockton knowing I was an old man and knowing that I, I'm kind of sick. Uh, I did it because the mayor asked me. He said the city is in rough shape right now and I, the mayor said I want to bring it back. I want to make it safe. Uh, I kind of know how to do that. It's one of the only things I'm pretty good at, is understanding um, how to encourage bullies and pimps and drug dealers and gangsters, trying to show them another way uh, to the wagon. And uh, that's what John Crowley and I are doing. That's what your police department is doing. We are not tolerating the stuff that destroys a community. Prior to my arrival, there were state police here, and there were other agencies that were coming in and out of the city, but they were relatively autonomous. In other words, they might be up here doing something that we didn't know about over here, or that the sheriff's department who's helping us didn't know about. And so they were all, we were all working a bit independently. So what we did is we brought them all into the same tent, and we all have the same list of people that we're trying to pick out of your neighborhood. We're all, we have conferences, we have meetings all the time, so we're all on the same page. So they, uh, there are some that are assigned here uh, uh, in uniform to, to drive, ride the streets, but uh, there's a bunch of them that are here in plain clothes. About a week, week and a half ago, there was a shooting, and the guy was trying to shoot another. There was uh, two, two people trying to shoot two other people. There's so many police in these streets now that you don't even see that as soon as the second or third gunshot went off, the state police in plain clothes had, had, were in the area and were chasing them and caught them and arrested them. I asked the, the department to make a list of 50 of the worst, most nasty, unpleasant criminals. And rather than wait, wait, wait for them to show, their, show themselves, we're following them, we're looking at them, and we're We've arrested about, I'm going to guess, 12 to 15 out of that list. Once, Because in my opinion, a small amount of people account for most of the crime. So if I can get 50 of the worst people off your street, crime will start to go down a little bit, maybe a lot. There's only the same people doing it all over and over and over. While we're doing that, I don't want to neglect the nice kids that are coming up underneath them who need direction from social service agencies. So what we're going to be doing is when we go into an apartment with the battering ram and the 
guys all dressed up like soldiers. When we take them out of the house, we're going to make note if there were siblings in there, younger kids that, that haven't turned bad yet, but, they, but they're living in a terrible environment. And we're going to flood them with people who want to help them and get them into programs and, and follow them as they get older. Drug addiction is so uh, prevalent today that the mothers and fathers, uh, they don't even know what they're looking for. You know, the phone rings all day and it's, you know, some kid on the other end you never heard of. Is Joey there? Well, the mother and father have to find out who's making that call. Why are these people calling here that never called before? You have to have very frank discussions with the children. You have to watch them like hawks. And it's not what we want to do. We want to relax around our kids and, you know, buy them stuff and uh, make their life um, good. But we can't because of the environment that's right outside these doors. And it's all over the place. It's not just Brockton. It's in some of the finest suburbs in the state. Right now we're on top of the situation, but we're being tested because it's getting hot out again. And they're coming out of the little uh, uh, apartments or whatever, wherever they are, and uh, they're gonna test us. And they're gonna come up on the short end of that test. I have no doubt whatsoever that this city will be a lot safer uh, by the middle of the summer than it was in a long time. Brockton's made up of great people uh, of all races. The, uh, you know, the uh, Cape Verde people want the same stuff that we do. They, they have kids, they want them to be safe. It's really a melting pot here. And I haven't seen any group of people that don't share the same uh, desires that we have to, to be safe. Well, there you have it, another One North Main in the books. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed covering it. To learn more about Brockton Community Access, please visit our website, bcatv.org. Also check out our YouTube page, youtube.com backslash the Brockton channels all one word. For everyone at One North Main, I'm Jay Miller. We'll see you around town.